Dr. Elena George is on the line with us. She's a board-certified otolaryngologist and a conservative commentator. Her website, DR, as in Dr. Elena, E-L-A-I-N-A, George.com. And uh, Dr. George, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for joining us. Um, uh, you, if, if, let me get this right. You are in favor of repealing Obamacare. Do I have that right? Yeah, you're correct. I am. So what would you replace it with? I would replace it with free market medicine, um, something called direct pay medicine, which would allow patients and doctors to actually work together, remove the middleman that the insurance companies have become, which are jacking up the cost, decreasing access to patient care, so that we can actually go back to practicing medicine again. So you want patients to, I mean, for example, the doctor I have here in Washington, D.C. doesn't take insurance. Is that what you're talking about? You just, you just want to be paid cash? Well, actually, there's another model where it's a subscription-based type of model where you spend a small amount per month, not the thousands that have been targeted as concierge medicine, which is almost like having like a Netflix account where it covers everything that the doctor can do in their office. So that's unlimited visits, that's house calls in some instances, that's discounted um, prescription medication, and discounted labs. So you're actually getting real value for your money. Right. So... If we're going to, if we the people are going to bear the entire cost of our medical expense and we're going to be writing the checks directly to our doctors, which is what you're talking about, um, only 30% of Americans right now are live in a household where the income for that household is enough that they're not progressively every month going deeper and deeper in debt. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, you know, we've gone from 34% of our labor force being unionized down to 7%, and along with that, We've gone from about 70% of Americans being able to make it into the middle class down to below 30%. So what do you say to that 70% of Americans who you know, pretty much can't even afford to pay off their credit cards when, when they say to you, what, you want me to pay you rather than being able to get you know, very inexpensive health insurance through Obamacare? But they're not getting expensive health insurance. That's the problem. They're paying a lot and getting nothing. There are 200,000 doctors in the United States and growing that don't take Obamacare, and the out-of-pocket costs associated with it are astronomical. When, when you say there are doctors who don't take Obamacare, are you talking about doctors who don't take Medicaid or doctors no. who don't take health insurance? Because Obamacare is not a thing. Um, what the Affordable Care Act does is it provides an exchange on which people could buy health insurance from Blue Cross or Aetna or uh, United Healthcare. Is that what you're saying, that there's doctors that just don't take any insurance or they, no, they don't take Medicaid? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying they don't take Obamacare because when people come to their office and they think that they're covered, they find out that their out-of-pocket costs are really much higher than they thought. I've actually had patients leave my office because their deductible and co-insurance, which is part of Obamacare, is $1,200, $1,600, $2,000, and they have to meet that before the insurance actually kicks in. Right, if you get one of the so, crappier plans. I got it. And, and, it's and, not a crappy plan. That's actually how it's set up. It's set up so that the actual... Out-of-pocket cost is borne more by the patient than it is by by the insurance. But that's company. Dr. George. That's nothing compared to these these uh, uh, basically disaster insurance plans that so many people had before Obamacare, where you know it, it, the 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 out-of-pocket is ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand. I've seen them where the out-of-pocket is fifty thousand dollars. They still exist. And under Obamacare, you're actually getting it taken out of your paycheck, but your deductibles have actually gone up. And what they haven't told people is that the actual premiums are expected to go up for this 2015 calendar year. Yeah, 3%, less than, less than any time in the last 25 years. As you said in the beginning of, this, of your show, or our, our little segment here, people already can't afford to go to see the doctor. And going up 3% is the difference between paying their mortgage, maybe, or their, or their phone bill, and going to the doctor. So your what solution, about, what you would say to the millions of people who now have health insurance who didn't have it before, is, and, well, and, and somebody gets, let, let like, me, for example, my, my wife had word. breast cancer. The, the cost of her treatment, just the cost of her medication was $100,000. The cost of the surgery, you add it all up, it was well over, uh, you know, a couple hundred thousand, quarter million dollars. Um, it might have been more than that. You would say to her, sorry, tough luck, just write a check to the doctor. You know, I don't appreciate you putting words in my mouth. That's not what I would say to her. What I would say to her is that she would go to a place like the Surgery Center of Oklahoma where their prices are online, transparent, which covers the doctor's fee, the anesthetic fee, and the facility fee for a fraction 
of what the hospital charges she'd be actually so, saving money. So say she could get her, her uh, cancer surgery for $15,000 instead of for 60000 and she could get the, 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 the drug. I mean, I, this drug is not discounted. It's, uh, you know, the, the, it's, it's 100 grand. I mean, Yeah, well, that's also assuming that she can get it, and they don't tell her that it's medically unnecessary. You know, you don't understand. Just because you have health insurance... You think chemotherapy is medically unnecessary? I'm not saying that. I'm saying the insurance company, please stop cutting me off. What I'm saying is when the insurance companies bear the cost, when they control the purse strings, they change the game. So I may write that chemo drug as a doctor, but it doesn't mean the insurance company is going to cover it. And what we're seeing as doctors is the insurance company coming back and saying what we and the patient decide is not medically necessary, that it's not covered, that it's experimental. So if you want to get the insurance companies out of the, out of the game, why not advocate national single-payer health care? Because it won't work, because the government becomes this okay. Why does it work in every other developed country in the world? It doesn't. If you look at the Netherlands, if you look at Sweden, if you look at the U.K., it doesn't. It works what spectacularly. Is, I've lived and worked in those countries. What they're doing is euthanasia, and they're actually now killing people. Do you believe that, really? Once you read, it's actually been in the news. You believe that? I I'm it. sorry. You are deluded. Oh, there, I, you know, I don't think there's a reason to call anybody names here. No, I, this I, it, is the Tom it's, Hartman program. It's not a name. It's it's a it's a description. Dr. Elena George, uh, thank you for dropping by. Doc, Dr. Elena George.com is the website. We'll be back.